Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you all doing? My name is Amanda Ellis and a very warm welcome to my channel. Today is the 13th of July 2024. Uh, but this is going to be a pretty timeless video, actually, because I would like to go over and explore and dive into a subject that I think at surface level, many of us feel as though we understand. It's one of those words or combination of words, light codes, that are banded around a lot in the spiritual community, in on the spiritual path itself. But what does it actually mean? What are they? What effect can they have? when we either integrate them or block them? Why is light important? What colours or combination of colours can help us to root them into the body as well as allow them to flow through us to optimum benefit? And this is going to be a really pretty interesting video, I think. We're going to be touching on many different subjects, including DNA strands, chakra system. Um, I've written a few notes down here. Metatron wants me to talk a little bit about photosynthesis, luminosity, uh, keeping it light versus keeping it heavy. These phrases that we use and we don't even realise really what we're saying and the importance of what we're saying, but more than anything, what we're actually doing with light. Because without light, effectively, the human being can't really survive very long. So certainly not in a healthy, functioning body. So we need light to survive just as much as we need food, water and shelter. And we have changing light conditions all the time across our planet, just with regards to whether it's night and day. But one thing that Metatron gave me today to start this video off is he says, not all light is equal, but all light has purpose. So let's just repeat that. Not all light is equal, but all light has purpose. So we're going to be talking about different types of light, including moonlight, sunrise, sunset, thick fog where you feel as though there isn't any light, galactic light, angelic light, maybe touching on demonic light. Is the light within demonic energy? Or has it all been taken out of it? Why are we attracted to the light? Or why are we attracted to the dark? So we're going to be exploring this type of thing. Why I'm doing this and why it's come in is that, yes, I do have a promotion on. I'm just going to say that at the outset. Uh, it's a way to support this channel. Uh, keep all the videos that you watch month in, month out, if you a long time, free and accessible to everybody. Um, but as you know, I do sell colour aura sprays. Colour is light. We'll explore that a little bit, although I'm going to be bringing out a much fuller colour therapy course this year, uh, which will be an online course, but more of that another day. But effectively, what we've got is a boxed set. I will put the details below in the description box. Uh, it's called, let me just show it to you. We'll, we'll have it in for it to be visible in the video. But I called it, let me just do it up. I called it Integrating Light Codes Spray Set. Okay, it's got three sprays in here. Looks like that. And it's also got four crystals that we're giving away free um, for the first 30, 40 orders. We'll see how it goes. Maybe 50 if I'm feeling generous. But in this starter set linked into light codes, we've got the pure white light download spray. We've got the rainbow ray upgrade and expansion spray. And we've got the earth element ground spray. So I'm going to be referencing these sprays throughout. And why I'm doing this video is not just because, OK, we've got a promotion on. It's because when I said to somebody recently that we're doing this light codes work, they said, I don't even understand what light codes are. And I thought, ah, 
you're probably not going to be the only one maybe then that is maybe a little bit confused with regards to this term. So I thought a video to help would be really uh, important. Whether you purchase the sprays or not doesn't matter. Um, but it would be nice if you maybe give me a like on the video uh, just to try to get this work out there. I would, would, would uh, appreciate that. Um, before I forget to say, yeah, these are the four crystals that come with the set. They are, we have actually written it on the box up here, Crackle Quartz, Fluorite, Bronzite and selenite, selenite. Okay, so we'll come back to that later, but let's just put that in shot. In fact, let me take these crystals out so we can feel their light in the video. Because of course, crystals are a wonderful way to access light. There we go, as are many other things as well. Right, let's then get to some of the teaching and let's begin where Metatron began with me today. When I was sitting down thinking, where do I begin with such a huge subject? So these are a few of my notes. Number one, he wanted to talk about how we notice an absence of light in something or someone. And when I say something, that could be maybe within a film or a documentary. It could be within a piece of writing. It could be within something that you are consuming as food. Food absolutely has different light quotients, dependent on whether it, for example, is fresh or stale, but also with regards to maybe the nature of food. Highly processed food, for example, junk food, has far less light quotient within it than a fresh salad, vegetables, fruit, you know, all the things that we know are actually good for us to eat. So we can see it in food, we can see it in things we read, things that we digest, um, we can see it in pieces of art, we can see it in anything basically, um, but we can definitely see it in ourselves and also in each other. You probably know yourself when you've gone through periods of time where you've been very sad, maybe depressed, unwell, um, just down on your luck. You look in the mirror in the morning and your eyes really reveal the truth of what's going on. The eyes, as they say, are the window to the soul. What is the soul made of? Light. In fact, everything is made of light. Your human body at a cellular level is made of light. Your essence is light. Your soul is light. So you can absolutely see the quotient of light in somebody's eyes. Um, very much like Metatron saying, you know, with like a dog. A dog, when it's healthy, has a wet nose. <laughs> Dogs also have the most beautiful eyes, of course, as well. But let's get back to the eyes. You can see the light in somebody's eyes and you can see the absence of light in somebody's eyes. That expression that the lights are on but nobody's in is one that we know. So too if people are carrying very dark energy, um, very manipulative energy, you will see it in the eyes. There's a dullness, there's a deadness there. There's also something where people won't look you in the eye. Now, of course, staring at somebody in the eye the whole time is incredibly uncomfortable, so we all look away. But it's when people do that all the time. And you might know people in your own life who just will not look you in the eye. It's always a sign of some type of manipulation or lying or not wanting to, I mean, it can be linked into confidence as well, but equally, let's put it this way, if you are feeling abundant and joyful and confident and worthy, you're more likely to look up, aren't you? There's that expression about, are you looking up to the stars, looking at the world, or are you looking down into the mud? You know, which perspective of life have you got? So anyway, we won't get bogged down in eyes, but you can see the light in somebody's eyes. We also know that things such as seasonal affective disorder are a real thing in our world. 
particularly where I live in this hemisphere. And actually, the UK is a really good example of it right now. Today is a sort of sunny day, but it's starting to cloud over already. If you look at the map of Europe, UK for quite a few weeks has been on its own, as it often is, but it's been on its own and it's shaded blue. It's very, very cool here. Very cool, very cloudy, not a lot of sunlight. And it affects your mood. It affects your overall health through a year if you don't have enough sunlight. So yes, there are ways that we can get around that with regards to um, lamps, um, incorporating light in different ways, which is what this video is all about. But we know that SAD is, is a real thing. Metatron was also talking to me, and I'm not going to go on about this because I'm not a scientist, but um, I just heard the word photosynthesis, which my brain sort of tried to whir into gear and remember what that was all about. And I'm just going to pull it up because I did have it. I did have it up. I was all going to be very streamlined this video, but hey ho, you know me. Um, what is photosynthesis? So my days of doing biology at school, I remember it's to do with leaves and sunlight. And here we go. Thank you, Google. The great God Google. Does Google have light? Some would say it does. Some would say it absolutely doesn't. It's probably a mixture of light and dark. Let's be, let's be clear. Um, photosynthesis is the process by which green plants and certain other organisms transform light energy into chemical energy. So during photosynthesis in green plants, light energy is captured and it's used to convert water, carbon dioxide and minerals into oxygen and energy rich organ organic compounds. A plant knows what to do with light. It knows how to integrate it. We do actually left to our own um, natural instincts. But unfortunately, we are living in a world with, I want to say mass distractions, but I want to also say mass hysteria at the moment. Okay, so caught up in dramas, caught up in gossip, caught up in survival as well. Many people just struggling to survive. Um, there's a lot of stuff that is taking us away from a more simplistic lifestyle of old. I'm going way back in time with our ancestors where we lived on the land. We knew how to work the seasons. We were close to nature and we just knew what to do with light, very much like harvest time. Um, a, a farmer harvests his crop, he stores it for the year ahead, he makes sure that there is enough plenty for the times of drought. And Metatron's also shown me the energy of the camel today. Okay, so the good old camel. Now, the camel, if any of you have been on one, you know it's got a big hump on its back. <laughs> And of course, um, it stores an extraordinary qu quantity of water. The card here says, trust that you have the resources to get through the challenges before you. Now, what Metatron is suggesting is a bit like the camel. Not that we drink that quantity of water, but we need to be absorbing as much light as we possibly can for example, to see us through the winter months, to see us through difficult times in our life, just to get us through a typical year. And often we don't. And what he's showing me now is, and this is very applicable to the younger generation, but not exclusively, uh, the obsession, for example, with gaming and staying inside on a beautiful sunny day to, you know, play your computer games or whatever it is you're doing in gaming world. There's a time and a place for anything. Gaming is not wrong, but it's just we need to be making time for that if that's what you love and that's what's going to give you joy, but also to get out there. And it feels as though modern society and modern life and the way that it's being structured now is preventing us or encouraging us, would be a better way to put it, to not do that. 
even at a very basic level, things like shopping. I've talked about this a lot on my channel. The uh, dominance now, for example, of online shopping. Can't really be bothered to go out and buy a pair of shoes. I'm just going to order them. It's this thing about going out of the front door less and less. Even when we travel, we're in a sort of cubicle, we're in a train or we're in a car. We're not really feeling that direct light on our skin, on our bodies that we need. And why do we need it? We need it very much like the plant to grow, to be strong, to be healthy and to endure the journey. And the journey is life. The journey is life. Now, from a spiritual perspective, we know we're in a spiritual war, a battle of light and dark. This is not the first rodeo that we've been in that, that and it won't be the last either. But again, if you think about it from spiritual terms in the battle of light and dark, if you've got a deplenished light quotient within you, then the battle's almost lost before you've even gotten the bloody battlefield, okay? So we have to be doing everything that we can to be filling ourselves up with light. And this is about so much more than just getting out there on a sunny day um, or on a beautiful moonlit evening. It's to do with starting to understand your life and seeing the opportunities and the windows, excuse the pun, to allow the light into your body. And this starts from the moment that you wake up in terms of your mood, okay, keeping it light as well. These, these expressions that we have, keep it light. I'll give you an example from this morning because a light quotient within us, um, I'm being shown, uh, you know, like an, uh, on stereo systems, I don't know whether they still have them, they probably do, or if you do editing, they have like the equaliser that goes up and down all the time to see, you know, like this this microphone will now be doing it for me. If I speak really softly, it's going to, it will be going down. If I speak loudly, it goes up. And you can see that actually on a monitor. Um, and that is affected by things, okay? These things include energies that are directed at us that we can either choose to absorb or deflect, yeah, back to sender. But if we absorb them, what they do is they sort of eat away at that positivity and that light that you have within you. Uh, they start to drain the battery. And I had a good example this morning. Uh, I have done some pretty deep work on Instagram and Facebook this week. Um, I'm not going to go back into it, but you know, if you're on, you know, the last couple of days of what I've been talking about, a very heavy story that was in the news, but I tried to use it as an opportunity to raise awareness on domestic violence and um, abuse. And we created a portal of healing. It's been very beautiful, but you know, it, it was heavy. I, I know that it took a bit out of us all. So last night I thought, right, I'm just going to raise the energy a bit now. Now that we've done that work, it's Friday evening and we've got a whole weekend of sport ahead of us. And I, for one, I'm looking forward to it. So we've got the Wimbledon finals and we've got the World, not the World Cup, the Euro 2024. England are in with a chance to win. First time in 60 years they will have won a big championship. So it's a big deal in my country, okay? A lot of people are willing them on. A lot of people are excited about it. It's bringing a lot of enthusiasm and joy and passion and that can only be a good thing. And lots of people love the tennis as well. So I put a little post up about that. I just said, let's all just try and enjoy it. You know, get your favourite beverage in, get the strawberries and let's come on, you know, let's, let's do it and let the best team win. Let the best man win. Let the best woman and win. And then there was a comment this morning which was like, oh, it's all just a distraction. Why are you going on about that? And I thought, oh my God, that is just such a, can you feel the energy of that coming at you? Cancel, clear, delete. Um, I mean, poor love who did that because it's like, you're not getting it. This is an opportunity to bring unity, to bring a bit of joy, a bit of laughter, a bit of fun. That raises our light quotient. It's something other that can either raise our light quotient or we can, as this woman did, block it. But more than block it, try to bring everybody else down to that level. The equaliser just flatlining. So I thought, no, I'm not having that. Cancel, clear, delete. 
thank you very much, goodbye. Um, it's just an example. There are so many examples through the day. A smile takes nothing. And even if you're feeling utter misery, there is a chemistry that goes on in the brain, fires the neurons, that even in abject misery, trying to just raise a smile, even if you have to literally do this like the Joker, <laughs> okay, I'm being serious, it helps to elevate your mood. Your mood is linked to the quotient of light within you. So, but you know, some of these other phrases that we have as well, um, throw some light on a situation. I'm going to bring something to light. Light is about illumination. It's about illumination. Light is also a guide. You know, many people call Jesus the light of the world. If it's, he's not that for you, whatever you believe in will be your light, your guiding light. Also, your higher self is your guiding light. Your guardian angel is your guiding light, etc. Um, so, we know that light is important, but let's go back to this thing that Metatron said about not all light is equal, but all light has purpose. It's quite an interesting one, that. And I'm actually going to go to the sprays and I'm going to use them to illuminate a little bit more what he means by that. And I think we'll go to the white light spray. So I've got another one. This is the one that is actually in the set. This is called Pure White Light Download. So Metatron, I'm asking you, please, to illustrate here and give, give the people an example of how this white light can help to illuminate and expand what you said to me earlier this morning. Okay. So white light. Let's just bring the white light in. Not all light is equal, but all light has purpose. Okay, so he's showing me the human race here. <laughs> and the human race made up of the full spectrum of light. People that are completely unawakened, asleep. People who are lurking in the shadows people who are frightened to look in the mirror, to become who they are, to face the consequences of their actions as well. There are many different reflections of where people are on this light spectrum. And now he's also showing me, you know, in history books or geography books, you you see like Neanderthal man or way back, you know, before that, when it, supposedly, you know, we developed from monkeys or apes. So man was on all fours, pretty hairy, <laughs> on all fours, yeah. And then there's the progression through the ages to where we are now standing upright, walking on two legs, looking as we do now. I'm also being shown a projection into the future, though, of what we will look like. And as you've probably heard other people say, but Metatron is uh, confirming this, one of the things that's changing is good, one is not so good. So let's talk about the good thing. Now, you might not think this is a good thing, but in terms of brain power and intellect and telepathy and extrasensory abilities, we're going to have a larger forehead. We're going to have a, a longer skull. And, you know, this has happened before in civilization. There have been times when this has happened in ancient civilizations. There are skulls that have been found with these elongated um, skulls. So that's going to happen, but it's over hundreds and hundreds of years. That is actually a progression. Forget about the vanity of I don't want to look like that. You will want the skills, Metatron is saying, that this extra space within the cavity of the head brings to you. That's a positive. He's also showing me... Um, God, this sounds like we're all going to look terrible. I mean, <laughs> I've got to keep it light here because it's... I don't, God, God, I'm just losing it, guys. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Laughter is joy, he's saying. 
sorry, Metatron, I'm trying to take this seriously, but he's showing me webbed feet. He's showing me webbed feet, okay? Um, uh, he's showing me webbed feet in the future. Now, I do know that webbed feet, you can have webbed feet, so I'm not laughing if you've got webbed feet. That can be something you get in having life, but it's not that. This is something else. This is actually, I mean, it... <sighs> It's feeling a bit like the feet that a duck have or, you know, a swan. I mean, I don't think it's going to be that pronounced, but it's definitely like a change to the feet where they're more splayed. They're more splayed. So somebody like me is pretty, you know, stuffed because I've got really thin, narrow feet with no arches. OK, I've got flat, narrow feet. Um, and he's saying that won't that won't do going forward. So there's something about the feet being wider, more splayed. Um, but it's oh, okay he's saying it's in all seriousness it's, it's to balance out the headspace because otherwise you're a bit top heavy aren't you <laughs> he's also shown me unfortunately the negative going forward we will get back to light in a moment but this is just interesting i think it is anyway um hunched we're more hunched you know that the hunched energy and we don't want to go backward you know remember where we came from which was being hunched over um it's really important that the the spine stays as straight as you can uh and i talked about this in a previous video but we're hunching over more because we're all doing this um try to correct your posture as much as you can because that's going to serve you and it's going to serve your chakra system which is the system that will continue which is the um the wiring it's the it's the way that light moves through the body that hasn't changed for many many years and what he's showing me now is that the chakras are going to become bigger they're going to be more expansive um and again so it's as though the the, the back and the spine need to be strengthened to support this extra light that's coming in so it's like extra light here at the crown it's particularly the crown and the soul star and the stellar gateway more light coming in here uh, more space within the body here more space at the feet splayed out um expanded rib rib cage as well um so that's that's sort of going forward in the future i don't quite know how we got onto this but anyway uh where were we metatron so oh this was all okay right this was all to do with using white light to illustrate how a simple sentence can expand into something completely different because what white light will do is it will throw light onto different things that maybe need to be heard require attention um that are in the future you know it's as though we're being shown a vision of ourselves in the future or our, our um or to, to come in the future and that all just came from spraying this white light so that's a really good good example of how it's working because by doing that we can prepare for changes to come we can prepare for changes to come so let me go back. Not all light is equal, but all light has purpose. Uh, he wants me now to talk about the different types of light. So I have done this before quite recently. So I'm going to skirt over the first bit quite quickly, which is I have talked about, and I know Doreen Virtue talked about, which is why I first really learnt about it, integrated it, absorbed it, going way back when Doreen was Doreen, I have to say. Um, no, I shouldn't say that, but it's just a different version of Doreen now. But anyway, let's not get into Doreen. Her version of light is now that version of light. The version of Doreen she was had a different frequency and a different quotient, and it was going into a different place. It could have taken her into a different direction. It could have taken her into a different future. It could have taken her into a different potentiality. I'm hearing right now she's at a, she's like a dead end type. It's like a dead end. That's not referencing Christianity as a dead end. It's more in terms of where her light presently is, because what she's doing, and I keep wanting to do this, is she's just hammering home her message, hammering home her message message you are wrong i am right um, if you do this you're going to hell if you say that you're going to hell it's all about that type of energy is stuck in the rut whereas actually what she could have done if she'd stayed on a different path no judgment it was her choice we live on a planet of free will 
is she could have she could have expanded into a very different place and it frightened her is what i'm hearing um at at, at, at a consciousness level it frightened her don't know whether she was aware of that but at a certain point in time what metatron is saying you get to a certain level and the next step up is a big one and many people don't take it and what he's showing me is the analogy of a swimming pool where you're swimming in the deep end you're getting to the really nitty-gritty stuff it's you're getting very skilled at riding the rapids of seeing what's coming but for some reason fear kicks in and you go straight back to the shallow end and then worse than that you put on your armbands and you swim around there pretending as though you can't actually swim over there in the deep waters but anyway it is what it is it's a lesson for us all um she, she's doing what she's meant to be doing on this planet but that's just interesting in terms of light okay so he's now wanting to say as well this is metatron speaking of course, Metatron is inclusive to all belief systems, um, completely non-denominational. People come to Metatron, understand Metatron from many different belief systems, a bit like Sanat Kumara. But he's talking about the fact that um, within different belief systems, and he's not going to name them, but there are different quotients of light. And he's saying some are more fear-based. Uh, and also, it's not just to do with certain religions are more fear-based than others it's to do with the fact that denominations within religion have different quotients of fear okay um so that's certainly true within christianity which is what i've grown up with um there are certain aspects of the christian church that are more hell fire and damnation and brimstones and there are others that are more expressive and it's just hey we love jesus and we love you and how can we help you know um uh, and much more central to the message of Christ. But anyhow, so this is what he's really going back to. Not all light is equal, but all light has purpose because wherever you are on this light spectrum, whatever you're delving into, whatever you're exploring, there is some purpose to it. There's something you're meant to learn. Um, even if you go round back into a loop to where you may be, your greatest potential is. Okay. So, back to more basics. <laughs> How do we integrate light? We'll come to the colours in a moment. But yes, there are different qualities of light, as we know, through the day and the night. The qualities of light at midday versus um, sunset versus moonlight and night are different. They feel different. But I think it was when I was doing some channeling with Prince a few years ago. I think it was Prince who was talking about the importance of just walking in light, whatever light it is. And also the importance of, for example, walking in, you know, the rain and purple rain and all that type of stuff. But, yeah, there are different qualities to the light and they suit you dependent on where you're at. So, for example, if you're feeling very frayed around the edges and your nervous system is just on heightened alert, maybe sitting in the mid midday sun isn't the best suggestion. Maybe actually sitting out in gentle moonlight on a warm summer's evening would be much more beneficial for you. You would, because that would be giving your body something and your nervous system something that the midday sun and the brightness couldn't. But they all have a different place dependent on and use dependent on where we are and you instinctively know this animals know this but ideally through the course of a year let's go back to the old good old camel you need to have integrated and sat in and experienced and acknowledged moonlight sunrise sunset bright light and shielded light. And when I talk about shielded light, I'm talking about foggy light. Um, because even that has a purpose. Fog by nature can be very, it, it holds, it can, it can be a protective energy as well. Not always, but sometimes it can. So you need to be absorbing all of these different qualities of light. And it's interesting that with regard to sunrise, I mean, I'm absolutely as guilty of it as anybody else. Some people will only go 
and sit in sunset or sorry sunset or sunrise when it's like an equinox or it's solstice and then we all gather but that's not enough is what I'm being told it's not enough again if you were living on the land I know we all can't because we live in cities and towns lots of us but those of you that live on the land I bet you're used to going and sitting out on your porch and watching the sunrise or watching the sunset I know South Africa, you've, is it sundowners, you call it? <laughs> you know, watching the sun go down. We need to get more into that. It's not just a visual thing. It's something where we're integrating something that is as needed to the body as food and drink. We are absorbing that tone and that quality of light. Light codes. That's what light codes are. It's about the coded information, the coded healing, the coded frequencies, the coded love that is, it, that, that is within light, the sustenance that is within light. Light codes are all of that. Um, if you think about different qualities of light, such as galactic light, angelic light, elemental light, they feel different. Now, this isn't something you can just experience in one day. This is something that, again, through the passage of a year or a decade or a lifetime, it's really beneficial to spend some time getting to know the, the, the angels, getting to know the galactics, getting to know the elementals, um, because they all bring a different flavor to the table. They all feel different. And what they basically are, are different reflections of you. That you have a bit of the angelic Michael like L Michael light in you. You've got a bit of Metatron within you. You've got a bit of Joe feel within you. Although, to be frank, Joe feel feels a very neglected archangel that most people deflect and block. And I, I see that because we sell loads of archangel sprays and Joe Phil is always, unfortunately, towards the bottom. And as, as a yellow flower comes on my screen that I'm looking at here, because Joe feels about joy and we block joy because we get distracted by everything I've said previously. The dramas, the, oh my God, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? You know, what's going to happen next? Because we're being spun that. That's where powers that were want to keep us. We have to break out of that and discover the light and the joy that is within every moment. So I really encourage you, you know, however you do it, there's no right way to start or wrong way to start. There's no order in within which way you explore the different dimensions of light. But I just encourage you to explore them. And people will say, well, how do I do it? I don't know how to call on the Galactics. I don't know how to call on the Angelics. You call them. It's not, it's not difficult. It's us that make it difficult, I think. And that comes from a place of unworthiness. The who am I to call on Christ? Who am I to call on Archangel Michael? Who am I to call on Carly Ma? Who am I to, who am I, who am I, who am I? You are a divine being of light. You are a divine being of light. You are a divine being of light. Did you hear that? Did you acknowledge that? Can you accept that? If you see yourself as that, you see reflections of light all around you. In the same way that people who are filled with darkness will just see darkness wherever they look as well. Um, the false light brigade, you know, the people that are always calling out other people as false light. I've been called false light. I know I'm not. I'm not even going to defend it because I know what I am. I'm not going to stoop to that level. But the people that call other people false light look in the mirror because that's that's what it's all about you know we see it all over youtube don't we with regards to people that just want to feed the darkness by only looking at the darkness and i've been on youtube since 2012 so i know what i'm talking about and thank you if you've tuned into this video because there's a lot of videos that people will not tune into because they sound boring because you're not talking about the latest bit of gossip or the latest bit of drama or the latest person that we can call a reptilian or the late whatever it is. You know, that stuff sells. It's dark and it entices people in in the same way that light 
well, let, let me tell you what Metatron's given me with regard to this whole thing about light and darkness and what we're watching, what we're consuming, not just stuff on YouTube, but things we're eating, every, all of it. Darkness, what darkness basically is, is it's like a vortex that will pull you in. If you think about, where's my card from the Metatron deck? We've got the void. By nature, it's meant to suck you into the center. Now, when you get to the center of it, basically, you usually realize that actually, I, this isn't making me feel good. Consuming 30 Big Macs a day, you know, it's making me feel ill. I've got to get out of that. You know, it's like I see the light. That's another expression people use. I see the light now. I see the light, you know. I can't carry on like this anymore. I'm feeling terrible. You know, I can't keep reading this stuff. It's making me feel bloody depressed. I need to find my way back to the light, but only after experiencing all of that darkness and heaviness. And then it's just like something has to give. It's like Ten of Wands energy, please. And Ten of Wands is a good analogy because the Ten of Wands tarot card is about ask for help. The video I did a while back with Metatron and Commander Ashtar, which was that we will get you out of the rabbit holes. Put your hand up and we'll get you out of there. Because people fall so deep down into them, they can't, they can't even see the ladder. They can't even see the first rung to get themselves out. So ask for the help to get yourself out. Nothing wrong with going down a rabbit hole, but you need to get back out. Because if you, if you just consume that, you become that. You become what you consume. You, you become what you surround yourself with. Uh, like attracts light. Oh, interesting what I just said there. Like attracts like. Um, so this is why, you know, darkness will surround itself with darkness. Yes, there are certain people that are tasked with going into that darkness to take it down. Absolutely. That's a different thing, really. I'm just talking generally here. Um, so darkness is this vortex. It's where everything is absorbed. Everything is absorbed. There is great learning within the darkness. We should not be frightened of it. There's a time and a place for it. But light, what light will do is send you forth. Light by nature is reflective. One word that Metatron gave to me as well as photosynthesis. Let me just look up this word. I don't actually know how to spell it, is luminosity. <clears throat> luminosity. Um, what is the meaning of luminosity? Luminosity is the state of producing or reflecting bright light, the state of appearing to shine. Um, the light was crystalline, giving everything a shimmering luminosity. And it, it, we can see it, in, again, going back to what I said at the start, we can see it in people, we can see it in our eyes, we can see it in a piece of art, um, etc. Okay, so, okay, what else do I want to say at this point? I think I'm going to go to the sprays and see what they want to say and what wants to come in now. So, let's get the kit. Let's have a look at these crystals, actually. I don't know whether that is focusing very well. I think it is actually. Is that focusing? Yeah. Okay, so I'll just tell you what crystals we've got in this set. Uh, as I say, they're free for about the first 50 sets. Uh, so, uh, crackle quartz. Oh, don't do that and throw them on the table. Crackle quartz um, contains all the properties of clear quartz. Crackle quartz has extra powers. Let me just see if I can get this. Is that now focusing if I do that? <laughs> I don't know. The problem is my eyesight isn't good enough. I've got my contact lenses on and when you get to a certain age, it's like I can sort of see close up, close up and then from a distance. It's all a bit weird. I don't know whether you can see that. Anyway, crackle quartz. What is this? It holds the full spectrum of light within its de delicate fractals. Um, a powerful tool for all kinds of spiritual pursuits. Um, helps to connect to guardian angels, ascended masters. Uh, particularly useful during meditation. Helps with manifesting, bringing peace and balance. And transmutes negative energy into love and light. Absolutely. I like the combination of it with um, selenite. 
selenite and cracked quartz. Um, oh, it says here, I hadn't read this. It says selenite is renowned for its luminosity. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And it's often associated with purity, peace and higher consciousness. It could be called liquid light because through clearing energy blockages, selenite allows for liquid-like energy, fluidity. I love that. Okay, so those two crystals. Now, this one I don't know much about. Tracy chose this one for our little set. It, it probably doesn't look much on camera, but it feels lovely. It's a beautiful brown colour. It's called bronzite. Have anybody, has anybody worked with bronzite? So bronzite is said to activate and strengthen the base and the sacral chakras. And we've put it in the box to complement the earth elemental spray, okay? The grounding spray. It says it clears confusion and promotes discernment. Wow, okay, I think everyone needs a bucket of this, myself included. Let's like staple it to our third eye. <laughs> clears confusion, needs some of that, definitely. I tell you what, anybody that makes jewellery, I'm being serious now, like jewellery or what I'm being shown is um, those like a like a not like a crown um a head headdress like a headdress that would be rather lovely um not a headdress like a headband but with i'm seeing like bronzite that would be beautiful wouldn't it anyway um helps to discharge discharge sadness from the physical and etheric bodies um, clears the release of grief and other dense emotions. But I like the fact that it's such a grounding crystal because if you think about that, it's like discharging all of this, well, sadness, for example, grief, confusion, lack of discernment, but it's taking it into the earth. And the earth knows what to do with stuff like that. You know, think about compost, think about manure. The flowers love it. They, they, they can't get enough of it. Well, they probably can, but you know, the point is they need it to bloom to the best of their ability. Mother Earth knows what to do with this stuff. And then the last one, fluorite. I mean, I love fluorite. I have a lot of fluorite around my home. Um, fluorite is just, again, it's a very good stone for clarity, mental enhancement, um, and again, just for, for cleansing. Also helps to sort of keep the environment clear. So they come with this set. So let's, which spray should we use? We've used the white light. Let's use the rainbow ray. Let's use the rainbow ray. So we've got our little rainbow on the side of the bottle. <clears throat> this is, um, the intention of this spray when we made it was that it could be used in, for any of the chakras <coughs> to upgrade and expand them. But as time's gone on, I think we're all more and more aware now of all of the different events that can happen with regards to light. And I'm talking here about uh, solar flares, for example, um, Schumann spikes, uh, etc., that can affect us. Um, the auroras, which we've been seeing more of in our world. Sorry, I just need to get something on here. Just do something there. That's it. Uh, the auroras, um, you know, portals, basically. And it, when I, for example, might take you through or another teacher takes you through 11.11 or Lionsgate is coming up soon, isn't it? Or Easter or, you know, any of the big portal days. Or, as I say, something that's happening like a solar flare or Schumann spike or whatever. It's like we know we're being blasted by light, light codes, but what do we do with it? And if we're not careful, what I'm being shown is we can be a bit like a straw, which is that you might absorb it and it might make you feel a bit weird and headachy and crampy or whatever it is, or bad tempered or unsettled. Think about your animals as well, even on like a full moon, animals get unsettled. Why is that? It's the light quotient that's changing. They can feel the vibration. But if we don't actually properly integrate into the body. What I'm being shown is we're just like a straw. It's like it's coming in and going straight out the other end, okay? <laughs> uh, it's not wasted, it will go into the earth. But ideally, you need to be, I keep going back to the camel, we need to be like the camel. We need to be able to just absorb some of it for ourselves. And very much like the camel, what I'm being shown is we need to have pockets 
well, our cells are pockets is what Metatron is saying. Our cells are actually actual pockets which can open up very much like the, some of those flowers that open up when it's light and they close when it's dark. That's what the cells are a bit like with this light. So when there's an opportunity for like a light bath, it's like, oh, make sure you open but equally then close. And that's, this is where these colours are coming in. So the white is to help you just acknowledge, appreciate that today is a high light quotient day. I embrace it. I welcome it in, in all of its different reflections, all of the different things that it can teach me. I open up my chakra system to that white light and white light will also flush through the chakra system, literally just by, you know, a couple of squirts above the top of the head. Or if you don't have the sprays, imagining the white light coming down through the whole chakra system. It's within the, the Metatron, um, card hold on where is it this one is this okay so the white light coming down and you're just imagining it flushing all the way through you yeah but then what this other energy is doing this rainbow ray is it's helping to it's, it's i'm being just shown that, that that those flowers that just open and then they close it it's like i've got it you know it's like my precious <laughs> My precious be in a good way. It's like I've got the light. I'm going to hold on to the light because I don't know when I'm going to need it. I might have a really rough week next week, you know, with something that I can't see coming that's going to hit me, you know. Um, or I've just got a difficult appointment. I've got a dental appointment. I've got something I'm not looking forward to. I'm struggling. I need that light for myself. Yeah. So this rainbow ray upgrade and expansion spray that's what it's helping to do it's helping you to save the bits that need saving for when you need it we're like camels basically just remember the camel if nothing else from this video remember the camel and you'll be okay i'm being serious the camel is the answer that's what we need to be like with regards to integrating and absorbing this light so we make it through as well as we possibly can. Otherwise, we're just like the straw. It comes in, it goes out. There's a new moon, there's a full moon. Oh, lovely. Oh, this is nice. Next day, you're flat as a pancake. It's because you haven't been able to retain any of that good stuff. I mean, this is such a big subject, guys. I'm realizing the more I talk about this, what a big subject this is, because this is also to do with boundaries. It's to do with, you can absorb all the light in the world. Uh, I'll give you the example. I'm about to go away on holiday soon. Looking forward to it. Hopefully I'm going to have a nice time. Okay. I'm going to be absorbing the light, the Mediterranean light. Can't, lo looking forward to it. Hopefully I'm going to come back charged up. A bit like the camel. Hopefully not looking like it, but you know, <laughs> like the camel, I've absorbed that light. What I don't need on day one of coming back is all the Debbie Downers, you know, the like, oh, all of this type energy, you know, whether it's online, whether it's somebody in my own life. Now, could that happen? Pretty high possibility, yes. So what do we do? We put our boundaries up. We block it. We deflect it. We say, no, thank you. That's your stuff. That is your stuff that you're projecting on me. And actually, is it my fault that you haven't done what I have done. I'm not talking about going on holiday. I'm talking about being the camel. The people, because we're getting into the energy of takers and givers. If you're an empath, and most of us are watching my channel, we give and we give and we give and we give. And then usually we experience at some point burnout or we realize we've given too much and we're tired, we're depleted. Why is that? Because other people are takers. Yeah. So you have to learn to get the balance right. But actually, hold on a minute. I'm feeling a bit off today. I'm going to, I'm going to not be online, for example. I'm not going to do this. So I'm going to cancel that thing that I said I wanted to go to, but I don't really. Why am I saying yes to things I don't want to say yes to? You know, this is a whole big area. It's to do with conserving our energy and our energy is light. And I want to reinf reinforce that color is light. Let's use this spray now and let's just see anything else that wants to come through. Rainbow Ray, upgrade and expansion. Hmm. Hmm. Really interesting, like the, 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 vibe, the frequency's changed, but it's become more serious. 
and it's because Metatron's saying we often self-sabotage or block the upgrade that wants to come in. We laugh it off or we distract ourselves from the serious work that maybe there is to be done. Um, the responsibility and the duty that comes from holding light, the humbleness that is required of it, the suppression of the ego, those people that are filled with the greatest quantities of light are often the unsung heroes of our world. And I'm being shown on the world stage lots of people gravitating towards false idols, I'm afraid to say. False idols that we think have got great light or great instruction or great teaching or great insight. But the question is, why are they doing it? For what purpose? Who are they really serving? So beyond a certain level of the ladder, it's as though the seriousness of the path becomes very apparent. It doesn't mean it's without joy. It's just there's a real alignment to intention, to why you came, to getting on with it, to not being distracted. And if we go back to the camel, there's periods of this journey which are very arduous and difficult. And it actually only makes it through because it's conserved enough. And if you haven't conserved enough, you don't make it to the finish line. That's the truth of it. Now, we've been talking about this card a lot. And I think actually at this point, it might be good to just see what Stephen Farmer had to say about this animal. It, it, maybe I've said what he said in here, but let me just see if there's anything that I've missed. Uh, if I may. So, the camel. So it's to do with resourcefulness, determination, steadiness, fortitude, survival, accomplishment, stamina. Trust that you have the resources to get through the challenges before you. It says, first identify where you want to go and then proceed slowly, steadily and deliberately towards that objective. As you move along, cast away your fears, doubts and hesitations whenever they arise, letting the four winds lift them up to the sun to be burned away. Ease your mind and heart and know that all is well and that you are protected at all times. Call upon those helping spirits who have assisted you up until this point in your journey. You have what it takes and you will get, you will get through this. Yeah, there's just this seriousness that's coming through with this integration. And maybe that's why sometimes we, we, we are happy to be the straw. It's like, yes, I, I want the prizey baubles, the, the prize baubles. I want, I want the light. But actually, what, you want me to do something with it now? Oh, no, it's all right, flush it away. <laughs> it's that type of energy. So the ones of us that are really doing this work and really integrating this light, we're here for the duration. And it is, there's a seriousness to it. Interesting how it just feels. To see if there's anything else I want to say with this Metatron. Rainbow Ray, upgrade and expansion. He's saying that the reward is worth it. Um, so I'm being shown the finishing line again and the, you know, for want of a better word, the gold medal. But it gets given to those that are willing, he's saying, willing to hold the greatest light on this planet. And he's saying to hold the greatest light on this planet, you will be attacked. You will be judged. You will be misunderstood. You will have people trying to derail you people who will betray you, people who will abandon you. It can be a very lonely path. And that's why a lot of people are just like, give me the light, but then let me get rid of that light. Because actually, I don't want to really face what it's either asking me to do 
where it wants to take me, what it could produce. I'm afraid of my light. It's that quote from Marianne Williamson. Um, it's not our darkness we're scared of, it's our light. It's not our shadow and our darkness we're frightened of, it's our light and it's our potential. And she was spot on. That's what this is. So for those of us that are really trying to say, no, I am, I'm, come on. I came here to do this. This is really important. So can you see how it goes really nicely with the white light? And then just to really cement it in, <laughs> we get to the earth. We get to the earth elemental. Third spray in the box. So let's look at this. This is about ground, okay? Um, let's see. Let's see what this wants to say. So with regards to what we're talking about, Metatron light codes. Okay, right. So straight away before I'm even spraying it, I'm sensing. So you're doing it for Mother Earth, okay? Why are you doing all this stuff? Why are you doing all this stuff? Why are you taking all these attacks? Why are you, why are you wanting to, well, not wanting to be misunderstood, but you're, you're just having to put your flak jacket on every day, your boundaries up, etc. You came for love of Gaia. As a soul, as a soul, your soul is made of light, being taken off planet now, way before incarnation, pre-incarnation. Your light chose to come here to this dense, heavy planet to try to lift its vibration. And the planet can only lift its vibration. Mm. Hold on, I'm just wondering whether I'm right in this. It's always good to question. I was about to say the planet can only lift its vibration with enough of us standing upon it that have the right quotient of light. But I'm not sure whether that's actually accurate. There's a bit of truth to it, but it's not the whole truth. Because the scarier truth is that Earth could ascend to a higher vibration tomorrow if she chose to. And she would fling us off a bit like fleas off a dog when dogs shake themselves if we're not at the right vibration and she cho chooses to go to seventh dimensional energy or above and anything not of that vibration would just cease to exist because you can't exist somewhere where your vibration doesn't match but she loves us enough to be patient with us to get there um is everyone going to get there no but will enough of us get there Yes, that's why we came. So we're grounding it into our physical body, this light, which is an expression of the earth. But we're also, I'm being taken back to those sort of webbed feet. It's like we are planting that light. I notice it whenever I travel. I'm not bigging myself up. Many of you will notice the same thing. You travel and there's always usually something that's either happened just before you arrive or when you arrive. I don't mean necessarily at you or right at your feet, but within the country or uh, vicinity. And it's like, oh, OK, that's why I'm here, is it? That's why I'm here. Or if it's not that, it's just a consciousness that acknowledges that I'm here to tread my light. And that doesn't mean that I'm waving a banner going, hey, here I am, aren't I great? I'm, I'm treading my light to your country. You know, thank you all very much. You know, no, none of that crap. That's just ego. This is just, I'm here at this place, at this time, I'm walking my light. I'm walking my light. And it's not just me. I've got all my ancestors behind me. I've got all my guides behind me. I've got all my angels behind me. I've got the host of heaven behind me is what I'm hearing. We all have the host of heaven behind us, but we don't realise it unless you acknowledge it and become conscious of it. And then you walk that into the earth. Do you not think that makes a difference? Absolutely, it does. So that's where the earth energy comes in as well. Um, OK, and now Metatron's saying the earth, a bit like the, the chakra system and the cellular system within our body that has these pockets that absorb the light and then, you know, close to keep it for when it's really needed and then release it. Um, this is what the earth is doing as well. So she's got these pockets of light. So I'm being drawn now to the different portals around the earth, um, the different places of great light and also the places of great shadow and darkness. Uh, I'm being shown some of the people in our world, brave warriors who are in this, these places of great darkness in our world right now um, and struggling 
to survive. And what I mean by struggling to survive is literal, but also I'm being shown the analogy of a beautiful flower that is just trying to, trying to bloom, coming up through the crack of concrete and dust and no nutrient and nothing, and just a heavy boot that wants to come down and crush that tiny little uh, shoot of green recovery i'm being taken the source of the oppression of women in our world i'm being shown the i'm being taken somewhere such as iran or afghanistan unfortunately where you know it's just being trampled into the ground but many brave warriors there whose light has not gone out so this earth energy is teaching here as well how we can share our light to those that need it the most not in terms of draining ourselves so we're depleted, just that these pockets of light, the, the camel effectively, is the energy of sharing. You know, if you need to, if, I don't know whether camels, I don't know if it's a camel, I'm being shown an animal that can, like transferring, you know, spit water through its mouth to one another. But anyway, whether it's literal or not, it, 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 that's what I'm being shown. It's sharing resource is important. Sharing resource. Um, I'm being shown a well on the earth, which, but it's not water at the well. It's light at the well. And it's as though we're used to people drawing water from a well, but there are wells which have light in them. These aren't literal wells, I don't think. I'm being shown now a tree, for example. It could be a tree. It could be a rock. We live in countries where we've all got these light portals and some of them are undiscovered, a bit like wells in the ground. Water wells in the ground are undiscovered and suddenly, wow, there's water here, there's an oasis. There are untapped light portals in our world and in all of our countries and it could be at the bottom of your garden or in your local park or where you walk every day. I'm being shown dowsing rods. Those of you that have got dowsing rods, you can douse for light just as much as you can douse for water. Um, that's a whole other subject, okay. But uh, those of you that douse know that it's possible to program your rods to find <coughs> different things. Very much like on the beach where I live, people try to find bits of metal with a metal detector. It's that type of thing. But we instinctively know this anyway. When we meet somebody, we know whether their energy is off. Those of us that are versed in energy. And again, if you don't feel you're versed with energy, this is a path that we're all on. We learn sometimes from the mistakes that we make, from the people that we make, meet that might betray us. And it's like, oh, right, I didn't see that coming, but now I see it in retrospect. It's all experience. It's all about seeing life as this amazing energetic playground full of light, full of shadow, full of experiences, but definitely the need to absorb as much light as we can. I think I'm going to end just by showing you a few cards uh, from the Metatron deck, actually. And it's interesting because I went to find this card this morning, which I've already showed you, which is the Chakra Light Body card. And as I was searching for it, and of course it's, you know, got light within the person, around the person, it's the aura, the aura is light, um, which is why we sell aura sprays to expand the light. But anyway, um, I noticed so many of the other cards, they're all themed around light. I mean, it shouldn't be a surprise because of course Metatron is about colour, it's one of his languages, colour is light. So, but just a few of them, you know, New Dawn, welcome back. Think about experiences in your life. Welcome back. It's like when you've, it's like when you've, I don't know, you've been ill or something and welcome back. Welcoming back the light within you that is regained or coming back from a period of depression, for example. Welcome back, you know, welcome back. Also the fact that we can welcome back ourselves slowly step by step i'm emerging from the cocoon for example of grief or sadness or apathy or laziness or being stuck i'm 
welcoming back every day a little bit more of myself to who I really am, to who I came to be. Welcome back. It's about the light. Metatron's healing is about light. It's about color. The light. Endings. There is light. There is light at the start of a journey. There is light at the end of a journey. The rainbow bridge card. When you die, it is the light, the rainbow light that guides you across the bridge. It's how we also can connect to people via light, via the rainbow bridge, if you're a medium, for example. Within the indigo sky, the darkest times in our life, there is light. There is always light. White light, reflecting the light. Be the beacon that you came to be. Shine on, be the light. Cosmos mirrors you. Why am I showing you this card? Because what you give out is what you get back. The more light you are, the more light you will attract. Will you attract darkness as well? Yes, you will. But as long as you shield yourself, you protect yourself, you are safe. Um, what else do I want to say? Why did I pull the Cosmos card? The Cosmos mirrors you. Let's pull another card to go with that. And then I think we will close this out. So in relation to this video, Metatron, light codes, the Cosmos mirrors you light codes we've got passion and love for life and letting go okay let's just spray the i'm going to spray the rainbow ray because it goes quite nicely with that card cosmos okay so straight away i'm just being shown yeah the cosmos full of light different qualities of light um, different planetary light the fact that you came and you hold different galactic light, different angelic light, different DNA within you, dependent on where you've been around the universe. I strongly have always felt that we're not just from one planet. You know, people that say, oh, I'm a Palladian or I'm a Syrian. I mean, I, I say I've got a very strong Syrian energy, but I know I'm not just Syrian. I've been on lots of different planets, as have you. You might not remember them, but you have. My blueprint is one which is filled with many different forms of galactic light and definitely angelic light, which I've always resonated with. If we started to see people more in those terms, in terms of resonance with galactic heritage, angelic heritage, becoming more angelic, becoming more galactic, but not to the expense of being a human being, because you came here to earth to reflect or, okay, what Metatron's showing me is the Milky Way, okay? So on a beautiful, warm night, looking up to the sky, seeing the Milky Way, seeing all the stars, all of the colors, all of the galaxies, all of that is out there. You're reflecting all of that here on earth and it's a beautiful thing it's nothing to be frightened of it's something to pull out of yourself and to share to re-remember but also to gain experience of what this planet is about which is also just as wonderful as anything out there because believe it or not when you're out there pre-incarnation you wanted to come you saw this great light and the great darkness that is here and you thought, I want to come and experience the quality of light on Earth that can only be experienced on Earth, only on Earth. The, the quality of light here is different. Think about it when you go abroad. Um, the quality of light is completely different in South Africa to what it is in India, to Australia, to America, to England, etc. So... Beautiful. Um, anything to say on DNA? I did mention DNA at the start, didn't I? Um, the DNA helix. Okay. Um, so what I'm being shown here is that the light codes coming in. So for example, something like a solar flare or uh, Aurora or 
full moon, new moon, whatever. A light phenomena event. Those that are open, we need to be opening up the, sh the chakra system to give permission for it to come in. It's going to come in anyway, to be honest, to a degree. But you can open up, okay, Metron, show me a motorway. It's as though it's going to come in anyway, but you could open up the, the freeway, is it? Where there's like three or four different lanes. So you've got a much more expanded bandwidth for which the light can come into your body and your aura and your home and your whole life, actually. But anyway, let's just stick with the physical body. And what it can do if you've really opened up the bandwidth enough, very much like you open up your aura like I am now, you pull, stretch your aura out, make it bigger. You can, um, okay, so the DNA sort of helix energy, which we all know and love, it's as though it's stretchy. It's as though you can, it, it can be stretched. It can be pulled. It can be expanded a bit like, you know, you expand your muscles. It's as though we always see it as this tight ribbon, this tight ribbon, um, this helix ribbon, whereas actually I'm being shown it's elastic. It's flexible. It wants to move and breathe and stretch. And that's what happens with, with light. That's what it's able to do. It's just, And then it can come back and settle more, but allow it to do that as well. So I think that's more sort of via visualization or meditation. If you're sitting out in sunlight or moonlight, whatever, just, you know, feel that helix energy within you, but don't view it so much as just this static thing, uh, static, unmoving thing, rigid thing. I, I feel as though people are viewing it like a rigid, um, rigid ladder where it's not that it's something much more fluid. Uh, let me just get a picture of it up for anybody that is confused. I think most of you understand what I'm saying, but just so we have a look at the the structure of it. Okay. Yeah, there's one. Yeah. So it, it, it's stretchy, it pulls, it expands. Um, it wants to be fed with the light basically. And then the more that that happens, what it's doing is it's activating dormant pockets that have been asleep. Uh, it's helping to get back online qualities that you do have. They're not alien to you. They're not, they're not something that's come in from some other weird place. It's all within you basically. It's all within you. It's just, it's some of the potential and some of the gifts and some of the abilities, they're lying dormant. And, and this is why it feels just important just to stretch it and uh, just, just feel it as fluid. Because then what you're doing is you're like, oh, well, there is a little pocket there. I hadn't seen that. That one needs a bit of food. You know, it's a bit like a plant. Oh, there's a, there's a leaf there. I hadn't seen that little green shoot there. You need a bit of spray or a bit of water as well, don't you? Or you need to wipe the dust off, all that type of thing. So, um, it's all good. It's it's all good. It's just the DNA is constantly upgrading and from generation to generation. Let me just see if there's anything else I can get with regards to DNA changes going forward. Okay, Metatron's saying some also go offline. Some go offline. Uh, and unfortunately, some of this is good, some of this is not so good. So uh, I don't want to end this on a negative note, but, you know, I've said this many times, including this week on Instagram and Facebook, uh, the fact that we're losing brain power, we're losing ability to focus and concentrate. And we're just we've got shorter attention spans and we have to we have to do something about that. We have to and we can you know, learn to play some music, read a good book, um, force yourself to read, I don't know, a, 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 
you know, a good newspaper, I'm talking, you know, what are, what are they called? Not a tabloid, you know, broadsheet, that type of thing. Challenge yourself. Watch something from a different country. Travel to a different country. Um, go out of your comfort zone. Don't be in the echo chamber. Uh, allow yourself to be challenged. Um, listen, to the, listen to the political party that you really don't agree with. See if there might be some nuggets within them, in there, because there probably will be. Uh, nothing is either inherently good or bad. So, uh, yes, yeah, this thing about certain qualities going offline because we're not using them. When we're not using something as a human race, it, they tend to just switch off. So we don't want our ability, our you know, heightened intelligence to be switching itself off because it's not being used enough. We don't want the dumbing down. We want the elevation. DNA can go either way is what I'm hearing. It can it can be regressive in terms of start to shrink if we're not using aspects of what it is to be a human being that we no longer need. Say if we all stop using our thumbs, we wouldn't have any thumbs, for example. Um, so use it or lose it, basically. <laughs> use it or lose it. Um, keep stretching. Keep stretching the mind. It's as though we can grow new DNA um, antennae, structures, whatever the word is, cells. But we have to keep pushing as a human race to evolve higher and better. And I want to say deeper, higher, better and deeper. So I do hope you found today's video interesting. Thank you very much for watching. I will put the details below of the uh, the box set that we've been featuring in this video. If it does sell out, um, give us a little bit of time to get it, get it, get us, can't speak. If it sells out, which it might do, give us time to get it back in stock, okay? Um, because Tracy and the team make these up for us. But yeah, we've got the three sprays in there. It's at a reduced price uh, with regard to what the three sprays would have been sold independently. And you've also got the crystals as well. So it's a nice little, nice little thing. Um, I will say, as we're talking about sets, there's also a few other spray sets to choose from at the moment on my shop. Um, let me just get the shop up. From memory, there's a new... Um, motivate me set uh, anybody struggling with motivation there's three three sprays that have been chosen to help you with that let me just get it up I think that one comes with a free journal as well like a journaling book uh, what are the sprays within motivate me we've got crim Bra crimson base chakra emerald renewal and recovery and fire and you get a choice of one of the journals with that um, but yeah, the, the reason we do the sets is that it just helps people who don't really know where to start. Um, so we combine three or five sprays and then you can choose. So there's an Ascended Master set, there's a Spiritual Protection set, there's a Spray Starter set, there's everything you could possibly wish for, but it's all colour, it's all light, it's all good. Um, that is what I do, that is what I offer. If you feel it is worthwhile, please give me a like and let's get this work out there. Let us spread Metatron's light. Thank you very much for everybody that supports me. I couldn't do this work without you. Love you dearly. Um, appreciate you dearly. And yeah, I'm off on holiday uh, next week, later on in the week, and I will be back towards the end of the month. But I'm going to try and record a couple of videos for you in my absence. What I thought I would be would be fun to do, because I didn't do it in January, and I know some of you are waiting on it as we're talking sprays. I'm going to do the top 10 sprays. But I thought I'm not going to do the top 10 sprays of last year because it's like it's been and gone. So I'm going to do the top 10 sprays, top selling sprays of the year to date. And that's that's really quite interesting what's happened over the last year because it gives us a reflection of where we are energetically. So I'm definitely going to do that. And if I have time, I will do one other, but we'll see how we go. I've got a lot to do to get ready for my holes and then just absorb some of that Mediterranean light. Can't wait. I will share that with you when I get back. Lots of love, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.